Let's talk about how to approach an F18 FDG PET CT. Of the PET CT scans, and we have different tracers now, F18 FDG is the most common one. This tracer acts like a glucose analog and it localizes to very metabolically active tissues. So cancer is of course very metabolically active, it's rapidly dividing, it's dividing more than it should be, and therefore it takes up a lot of glucose. So we can take advantage of that by using this tracer to localize where the cancer actually exists in the body. And that is the basis for how we do these PET CT scans. We're looking for metabolically active tissues, tissues eating up a lot of glucose, and that's usually in the setting of cancer. So what I have pulled up here is a normal PET scan and I just wanna talk about the normal distribution of tracer, an introduction in terms of a search pattern, how to look at these, and then I'm gonna show you an example at the end of a PET scan with pathology and we can utilize these initial learning points and apply it to a real case. So what I have pulled up here is what we call the MIP image. I like to look at this as the roadmap of the study and it just shows the distribution of the tracer throughout the image body. So the entire body shows up on this MIP image at least everything we've imaged. And we can get an idea just off the bat if there's anything abnormal. This is a normal MIP image. I wanna draw your attention to the brain. The brain's very hot because the brain is very metabolically active. And for that reason, it uses up a lot of glucose. So the, so the brain's always gonna be hot on an F18 FDG PET scan. If you don't see the brain and you're looking at a PET scan, it's a different tracer. There's different ones, PSMA for prostate cancer. There's a Siriana tracer for breast cancer that's used from time to time. So there are other tracers. If you see the brain, we're dealing with F18 FDG. So we see the brain and that's normal. This is the heart here in the left side of the chest. That's normal. This tracer is excreted through the kidneys. So you see kidney activity. That's excreted tracer in the kidney collecting systems and kind of going into the pelvis. And then you have tracer in the bladder. And then you see some general bowel activity. You see a little bit of liver. You see the spleen. You vaguely can kind of get a sense of where the bones are. So this is a normal distribution. This is our MIP image. This is what I look at first. I then pull up the PET images, and that's what I have here. And these are the axial slices of the actual PET data. So this is measuring glucose uptake, or the tracer uptake. And I go all the way to the top, and I actually look at the brain on these PET images. We have a fused PET CT part that I'll bring up next. But I actually start with this, and that's how I look at my brain. And I can't window it great here. But you can change the intensity to better delineate the anatomy in the brain and kind of get a sense of brain metastases. Sometimes you can catch them. It's very rare. Overall, PET-CT is not a good study for brain mets. If you're looking for brain mets, you want to do an MRI of the brain with contrast. But you can still see metastases. You need to look at the brain. And there's nothing obvious here. And again, this isn't windowed great. So after looking at the brain on my PET images, I then pull up the fused PET with CT component and I go all the way to the top. And I've already looked at the brain, so I'm gonna skip that, but here's the brain again. Then I go down to the neck. So I just start head to toe. We did the brain, we looked at just the PET images for the brain. Now I'm looking at the neck, and I'm using the fused images. The main pathology in the neck, in a lot of cancers is lymph nodes, lymphomas, head and neck cancers. You're looking for cervical lymph nodes. In this case, this is normal. There are nodes that are taking up too much of the tracer. So if you see a node that's really hot, that's pathologic. If you see a really big node too, that's pathologic. And they can take up varying degrees of tracer depending on what you're looking at. I then pay attention to here. These are the parotid glands. Sometimes you can have tumors at the parotid glands. You have your submandibular glands here. You've got sublingual glands. I then pay attention to the aerodigestive tract, making sure there's not a squamous cell carcinoma there. After the head, I go down to the chest. Important things to think about in the chest are first lymph nodes, and I start by looking for lymph nodes in the chest. So you have your axillary lymph nodes, they hang out here. These are all normal looking axillary nodes. Here are some there. They have a normal morphologic shape. They've got a fatty hilum. They're not really hot, and they're not taking up a lot of glucose. You've got mediastinal lymph nodes that hang out by the vascular structures within the mediastinum. Specifically with breast cancer, you want to look for internal mammary lymph nodes, which are here kind of along the chest wall adjacent to the sternum. I don't see any pathologic internal mammary lymph nodes. You've got your posterior mediastinal nodes that hang back out here by the spine. All things you want to pay attention to. You can also have epicardial nodes that hang out kind of around here, and this patient does not have those. I then go and look at the lungs, and you're looking for cannonball-like lesions that are hot. That's a classic look for metastasis. I'd window it different and look at the lung window and look for ground glass opacities, consolidation. Anything in the lungs can take up tracer, not just metastases. This isn't windowed appropriately, but let's just pretend that it is. I look at the lungs. After looking at the lungs, I look at the soft tissues. You can find incidental breast cancers on PET scans. And this patient is female. They do have breast tissue that's showing low-grade uptake. That's all normal. If you saw something that was focal and hotter, like look at the intensity of the myocardium. If there's something that's that bright out in the breast, you'd want to bring that up. 
we don't see that here this is normal I actually don't do the bones as part of the chest I do the bones at the end so I'm gonna go down to the abdomen and we'll talk about an approach to this part of the study so I actually pull up the pet images alone because I think it's better for looking at the liver the liver shows up a lot of times it's heterogeneous distribution of tracer. You can see areas that look kind of hot but aren't metastases and it can be a little tricky. You're looking for anything definite, anything that's much hotter than the background liver. I'm going through the liver now and I don't see that. And I just think these images are better than the fused images and looking at the liver. And you'll get a sense of that when I show you the positive case. And then go back to the fused images and then just go through every organ. We did the liver, looking at the spleen now, try to catch the adrenal glands, adrenal gland there. Get a sense there's an adrenal gland there. Look at the pancreas. Here's pancreas here. That all looks normal. And then look at the kidneys. And looking at the kidneys, I recommend getting a coronal reformat to look at the kidneys because sometimes tumors of the kidneys can be very subtle on the axial images. In this case, the kidneys are normal. And again, remember the kidneys excrete tracer. So you see bright stuff in centrally within the kidneys. That's within the collecting system. And then go down to the bladder. The bladder has tracer, excreted tracer in it too. So that's very bright. You can typically window on your the software that you use to read these studies and I always take a look in the bladder just to make sure I don't see anything beyond the excreted tracer. In this case all that looks normal. I then go back to the axials and then pay attention to the bowel and I just run I go inferior and just look at the colon one spot at a time. Certain medications can cause increased activity in the colon like metformin is the classic one but generally there can just be background activity in the bowel and you're looking for something that's focally hot, kind of like we talked about in the liver. Outside of the background activity, anything that looks bright, because a, a tumor of the colon, for instance, can be a focal hot spot. You want to bring that up. Obviously, if you're dealing with a known colon cancer case, try to find the primary tumor. In this case, in looking at the bowel, everything looks okay. And then try to look at the small bowel and stomach. And there are different inflammatory processes that can show increased activity. Like if you see a lot of increased tracer in the stomach, that doesn't necessarily mean stomach cancer. It could just be gastritis. Same with the esophagus. We see it all the time. People that have esophageal reflux, esophagitis, their esophagus looks a little hot. Here's the esophagus here. It's kind of hard to delineate from the aorta and the rest of the mediastinum, but the esophagus looks normal. So after all that, I cover the soft tissues, the abdomen and pelvis, the body wall, making sure there's not some odd hot spot on the skin, such as melanoma. Melanoma can be very hot. In a melanoma case, you'd want to try to find the primary body wall skin I'll look okay and then I look at the bones which is a little bit tedious but I just go from inferior to superior and just track look at all the bones individually the spine I pull up the sagittal reformat look at the spine there making sure you're not seeing anything that's focally hot then track all the ribs which takes some time and looking at the humeri scapulae clavicles and don't forget the skull you have to go all the way to the top look at the skull too and that's it after that I look at the CT alone without the PET images, look for any incidental stuff. Sometimes you can see random inflammatory things like diverticulitis, appendicitis. I've had patients that have had pneumothoraces on these scans. All that needs to be addressed after you do the PET cancer follow-up type work. So that's a normal study. I just want to show you now briefly a case that's very positive. You can get a sense of what tumor looks like, what increased FDG uptake beyond normal physiologic uptake looks like. So I'm going to pull up the next case now. And this is a patient with recently diagnosed breast cancer. So let's pull up the MIP image. So here's our MIP image. First thing I want to draw your attention to is the right breast. There's some activity that looks a little bit hot compared to the left. We just don't see that. We then see this stuff here. I think those are probably axillary lymph nodes. We'll confirm on the actual scrollable images. That's the main thing I see. We'll now pull up the axial pet images and start head to toe. So I'm going all the way up. We're going to start at the brain. Normally I'd window it a little better. We get a little bit of the brain. We don't get all of it. A lot of these cases you don't get the whole brain. I don't see anything obvious. So we go down, paying attention to the neck. Nothing major in the neck. Uh, we're now in the chest. So I'm going to go back to my fused images and I'll add that I like to look at the neck again with the fused images. Nothing major in the neck. I don't see anything. Okay, so now we're to the spot where there's actually pathology. So let's look at the right breast. It's not subtle. It's very, very hot in the right breast. And it's actually multiple spots. So this is a multi-centric tumor. And there's a lot of increased activity in the right breast. Clearly, this is our primary tumor. This is known breast cancer. We have that history. Breast cancer loves to go to axillary lymph nodes. Those are the nodes that drain the breast. And so these are all hot axillary lymph nodes that are metastatic. So we have those. 
I then want to look at the other side, look at the other lymph nodes. Remember those internal mammary lymph nodes can show up hot in breast cancer. Could be one there. Not 100% sure. It's hard to see a CT correlate, but there's increased activity there, and it's on the side of the cancer. That's probably a, maybe an early internal mammary nodal metastasis. I don't have the ability to window this great, but I'd want to then look at the lungs. Breast cancer can go to the lungs. Don't see anything definite beyond background in the lungs. Don't see any other nodes. We'll do the bones at the end. So I'm gonna go down to the abdomen. Remember, I like to do the PET images and start at the liver. So I've talked about the liver can be heterogeneous, but look at this. So this is the posterior right hepatic lobe. This focal hotspot, I'm pretty confident is a metastasis. There's that. I think there's another one that caught my eye. This maybe here could be a MET. And then something left hepatic lobe. I think that could be a MET too. So I think these PET images allow you to look at the liver a little bit better. I then go back to the fused CT images and we'll do the rest. We got spleen, adrenals, pancreas, gallbladder, kidneys look okay on the axials. Ideally, I'd go to the coronals too. Tracking the bowel, I'm going a little bit quicker than I normally do just for the sake of being efficient, but bowel looks okay. I don't see any suspicious lymph nodes within the abdomen or pelvis. We've obviously got our axillary nodes, but I'm not seeing any nodes here. And I'm not seeing anything really inferiorly in the pelvis. In women, always take a look at the adnexa, make sure the ovaries, if they're postmenopausal, aren't super hot, that can be a problem. That can be evidence of an ovarian tumor. So now let's look at the bones. Breast cancer goes to the bones. It usually produces osteoblastic metastases that show up as sclerotic. Some malignancies produce lytic lesions. Either way, they'll show up as hot. So this case actually has femoral metastases. See this hot spot here in the right femur? That's a metastasis. And there's actually another one on this side too. That's a metastasis. And it's weird that they're at the same level, but those are mets. And normally I'd go a little bit slower, but I'm looking at the rest of the pelvis and the vertebral bodies and the ribs. And I don't see anything definite here. Let's see. And I don't see anything of the visualized skull base too, beyond background. Normally you'd go through this a lot slower, but for the sake of being efficient and getting through this, that's a general approach to a case with pathology. We saw the primary tumor, we saw axillary nodal mets, we saw a probable internal mammary met, and we saw some femoral metastases as well. So that's a case of metastatic breast cancer, that's a case with real pathology, and that's how I go about reading these studies. Thank you so much for watching, hope that was helpful, and see you all in the next video.